Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, back bringing some more daily NBA news. And you know what? I read the comments every single day and to show my appreciation for all the support that you guys have been giving me. I'm going to now do what's been their most requested thing for me to do in the comments for a very long time. Do a video without the hat. Here we are. Anyways, thank you for joining me back here once again. As always, you guys are the real MVPs. And if you're new here, then thank you for stopping by. You are also greatly appreciated, but make sure that you smack that sub button and hit the bell as well so you can stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA on a daily basis. But now, let's take a look at what is going on in the NBA. However, I do have to first give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Hardwood Amino, the social media app for NBA fans only that keeps adding new features. Literally, you can just about do or talk about anything NBA related on this app. They now added another feature that includes wikis for almost every active player in the NBA. For example, this is a pretty cool one about Zach Levine and even about some older players too, like Mark Jackson. On top of that, you still have the public chat rooms, polls, quizzes. And if you're an aspiring sports writer, you can write your own articles for an entire community of NBA fans to see. With over 80K active users, it could be a great way for you to get your name out there. I'll have the link so you guys can go download it in the description box below. First up in the news, we have received reports that a team that was seen to be one of the front runners to land LeBron James in free agency this year is no longer interested in adding LeBron James, the Houston Rockets. That's right, according to reports, H-Town does not want LeBron James. I've been told that the Rockets have no intention of pursuing LeBron. They will be focusing on keeping their core together and taking care of CP3. Now this is huge news because like I said in the beginning, the Rockets towards the middle or beginning of the season even were one of, if not the favorite to land LeBron James this summer because the thought of him, Chris Paul and James Harden all on one team would be enough to take on the Golden State Warriors and if that wasn't enough to take on the Golden State Warriors then there would never be anything that would be considered enough to take on the Golden State Warriors. However, according to the report, the main reason they don't don't want to go after LeBron James is because they can't afford to go after LeBron James. That is because the Rockets still have to resign both Chris Paul and Clint Capella as well as Trevor Ariza this summer. So unless they're willing to let Capella and Ariza walk, then have either Chris Paul or LeBron James take a pay cut, if not both take pay cuts to get LeBron James to play there, it wouldn't financially be possible for LeBron James to join the Houston Rockets. And I guess the Rockets feel gutting their depth like they would had to do in order to get LeBron James just isn't worth it. So a couple of days ago, we talked about DeMarcus Cousins unfollowing the New Orleans Pelicans on Instagram and whether or not that means that he will not be staying with the Pelicans after this season. Once July 1st comes around, once he's a free agent, that he will not be re-signing with the New Orleans Pelicans. Well, yesterday, we got a full interview with DeMarcus Cousins thanks to a website called The Undefeated. And first and foremost in this interview, Cousins offered an explanation as to why he unfollowed the New Orleans Pelicans. The reason I unfollowed them was one, I was scrolling down my timeline and I saw a Pelicans fan page, so I followed the fan page and a picture popped up that read, did the Pelicans re-sign the Marcus Cousins or let him go. So I was like, I'm just gonna unfollow this so I don't have to see it. In my mind, that's all I was thinking. So I unfollowed and I started noticing people asking, why did you unfollow the Pelicans? I was like, how do you people even know I unfollow the Pelicans? I didn't even know that was possible. I didn't even know you can know if somebody unfollowed somebody. So my response, well, it was a little kid. Well, cause I'm grown. I do what I want, I'm grown. So he says that he unfollowed a Pelicans fan page and his reasoning was because they were posting things that he just just didn't want to see, which is completely fair. But the thing is, he also unfollowed the actual Pelicans themselves. And he kind of just swerved around that question without giving uh, an actual reasoning as to why. Anyways, also in that interview, of course, the topic of free agency popped up. And this is what DeMarcus Cousins had to say when he was asked whether or not he would be open to re-signing with the New Orleans Pelicans. Oh yeah, for sure. This is my first time in free agency, but I've been around this business long enough. I know how things work. 
work. I'm not out here trying to hold a grudge or anything like that. I'm going to make the best decision for me. And I believe teams are going to do the same thing. Also, when he was asked about what kind of team he would like to sign with this summer, this is what he had to say. Somewhere I'd be appreciated and a contender, a team that's ready to contend. Now, I guess it just depends on what DeMarcus Cousins' definition of a contender is, because I know there are numerous teams that DeMarcus Cousins can go to, and those teams immediately become one of the elite teams in the NBA. For our next story, Michael Porter Jr., the guy who missed the entire NCAA season with the back injury and still decided to declare for the NBA draft anyways, came out and said yesterday that he still believes that he is the best player in this draft class. Before this season, a lot of people had you slotted in as the number one pick yeah. in this draft. You still believe that's the case? Uh, I understand that there is some some risk with te teams don't know how I'm feeling, but I, I believe I'm the best player in the draft, yes. Now, before his injury, this very well could have been true, as there was a lot of hype and a lot of buzz surrounding Michael Porter Jr. He's been touted as the next Kevin Durant type player. Of course, when a guy gets a season ending injury like this and doesn't play at all in college, his stock is going to fall it's going to plummet even and that is why instead of being considered for the number one or even top three pick in this year's draft most projections have him going anywhere from fifth all the way to eighth in the nba draft however as far as why he still sees himself as the best player in this draft class despite all of that is because he says he is the most well-equipped player to play in the nba today the way the nba is leaning towards this positionless basketball craze i just think you know uh with the way the league's headed those positions positionless players, um, you know, tall wing players that can dribble the ball. Uh, I really feel like I could play one through four and feeling the way I do now, guard one through four. So, um, you know, I'm feeling great and that's, <laughs> That's just how I feel. And that is exactly why the New York Knicks are hoping that he falls to number nine. As we also got reports yesterday saying that the New York Knicks are hoping that Michael Porter Jr. will still be available at number nine in this draft. Also, the Knicks met with Michael Porter Jr. yesterday. And according to Michael Porter Jr., the meeting went extremely well. As he and the new head coach of the New York Knicks, David Fisdale, reportedly got along really well. Awesome guy. I really enjoy talking to him. He's a really easy guy to to talk to and I just vibed with him real well. The Knicks are looking for someone exactly like Michael Porter Jr. in this upcoming draft, a scoring, versatile, athletic wing that can play multiple positions. So I'm sure they would love for him to still be on the draft board at number nine. However, they have also said that they're just going to take the best player available regardless of position, even if that means they have to draft yet another point guard. All right, real quick, take a look at this picture. Do any of you guys know who that is? It's Alfred Payton. That right there is Alfred Payton, the man finally cut off whatever it was that was growing on the top of his head, and he is almost unrecognizable now. And this is actually going to be a pretty big deal for him, since in the past, sometimes he wasn't able to see the rim through his hair dangling over his face, which made him miss quite a few shots. So now that that shouldn't be happening anymore, now that he has a respectable haircut, he's already gotten exponentially better than he was last year. Lastly, in the news, Kobe Bryant had to put some unlucky NBA fan in his place on Twitter. So after Kobe Bryant announced that his next segment of his ESPN show called Detail is going to be on Jason Tatum, and basically what Detail is, is a show where Kobe Bryant breaks down or dissects the game of certain NBA players. What they do good, what they don't do so good, kind of gives them, you know, constructive criticism. Well, anyways, one user on Twitter responded to this thread by saying, I can almost guarantee you all of the Detail segment was not not even Kobe's idea. It was ESVN's and they chose him because he is one of the greatest to ever play. Put some respect on his name. Now, in this guy's defense, he was actually trying to defend Kobe Bryant from someone who was saying that Kobe was just getting carried by Shaq for most of his NBA career. But he did it in kind of a backhanded way where he was like, Kobe's a great player, but at the same time, this show wasn't his idea. He couldn't come up with this. And that right there is what Kobe had a problem with as he responded responded to this user by saying, why? Because I'm incapable of coming up and writing an idea of my own. Hashtag dear basketball, hashtag detail, hashtag my ideas, hashtag more to come. Wow. 
point taken guys never and i mean never under any circumstance discredit or question the creativity of kobe bryant but this doesn't stop there as the guy who made the original tweet responded back to kobe bryant by saying no sir not what i intended just felt like espn needs you more than you need them now i know when this guy first saw that kobe responded back to his tweet and saw what the tweet said that he was excited but also terrified at the exact same time because he just got put on blast by kobe bryant which is why he had to respond saying what he said however kobe later on accepted the apology by saying this despite me calling them the evil empire while i was playing espn has been a great partner overall i'd say this was a day that that fan will never forget and he will most likely be telling his children and even grandchildren about the day that he got kobe bryant to respond not just once but twice to him in the same day anyways that brings us to the question of the day do you guys think that the houston rockets should go after lebron james yes or no let me know why down in the comment section below but that is going to do it for today's video guys hope you guys enjoyed if you did be sure to smack that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more daily nba news thank you once again for watching i'll see all of you right back here tomorrow but until then keep getting the buckets to my gc and i'm out of here peace